My guest today is a Broadway icon who was just nominated for a 2014 Tony Award for her choreography of Bullets Over Broadway, the splashy musical comedy that she also directed. She has five Tony Awards already for hits including Crazy For You, The Producers, and Contact. Please welcome Susan Stroman. Hello, hello. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, thank you. Um, I have to tell you right off the bat, I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank and you. And having you here is an honor. Thank you. But it's also intimidating because you've done so much. I mean, I feel like we could do like a, a three-hour episode and just sort of go through. There's a lot There's a lot, There's a lot. lot about you. Well, I have nothing to do today. We could just hang and talk. Oh, good. Like I'm glad. I can't believe you have a day with nothing to do. <laughs> so um, here you are going to the Tony Awards again. I know. Th this is my 14th nomination. I was going to ask you if you actually knew the number. I know. Uh, and uh, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful and it was very exciting. And I you know, I adore Bullets Over Broadway, so yeah. the, the idea that we got six nominations is great, and everybody's excited, and so it's wonderful. This is the kind of musical that, like, you are so, this is so Stroman. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? You got the Corrines and the, the gangsters and the, yes. a lot of tap dancing and, and great comedy. Um, is that sort of what drew you in? Well, actually, it was the story, you know, uh, well, and Woody Allen, of course, when I got the call. In fact, it was exactly two years. On April 10th, I got a call from Woody two years ago, and on April 10th, we opened on Broadway. Wow. So it was exactly two years that I met him. And uh, so that initially was the reason to, to want to work with him. Right. And, uh, but in fact, it's the story, and I know it's a story that's important to him, too. You know, it's about... How much would you compromise for your art? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you kill for your art? <laughs> would you allow the producer's girlfriend in your show to get it produced? Right. You know, would you allow someone else to write your words for you just to get your show on? And I think for, for all of us in the theater or anybody in the art world, uh, how much would you compromise for your art? I mean, it rings true to all of us because right. we, we go through it quite a bit. Right. So what the show is about uh, really was what attracted me to it. Right. So it's not just, it's not just that it's a... Um sort of a fun 30s romp, the 20s. What 20s, the yes. 20s romp through sort of the Broadway scene. <laughs> but it's actually like the message of it. I mean, because... Well, yes, of course. There's another theme besides the theme about how much would you compromise for your art, that, that theme also that we all relate to is are you in love with the artist or the man? Mm. And I think we've all been through that uh, uh -huh. in, our, in our lives, too. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, with the, you know, the book is fabulous. And, and the fact that it does play, take place in the 20s is great for me because I get to tap into uh, not only the dance styles of that time, but also everything about New York City. Mm -hmm. You know, it was during Prohibition and right before the crash. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm. It was very dangerous. You know, so the choreography is even uh, taps into the architecture of New York. And, you know, you see the Corrines with, you know, where they would have holding balls in their hand, you know, these Art Deco figurines mm -hmm. and, and just uh, Vargas, pictures of Vargas girls and, right. and the John Held cartoons. You know, that, that time, all the choreography taps into all those images of the 20s. So I, and I'm usually in the 30s, you know, with Crazy Few and, right, you right, know, so, right. so the 20s was a new time for me in a sense. Do you find gangsters hot? Well, I find my gangsters very hot. <laughs> do you like bad boys? I do. I love that Cheech. Uh, you know, Nick Cordero, who's Tony nominated. Yes. But he's hot stuff. He is he terrific. He's hot stuff, yeah. He says that you taught him how to, I hear this a lot, that you can sort of teach anyone, I'm sure you can't teach anyone how to dance, but that you can take people and sort of turn them into that. I mean, he has amazing dance. He's a stair nominated. He is a stair yes, nominated, yes. I know. He's a real Broadway <laughs> huffer. I know. So. You, he walks in for the audition. I didn't know who he was. But I guess yeah. he was in like the Toxic Avenger, Avenger yes. off Broadway. Um, what did you see in him? Well, the, th the thing is, too, when he read, uh, he was able to land this comedy without changing. You know, he, he was authentic. Mm. He was an authentic gangster. He was an authentic killer. Mm -hmm. Yet he was able to land these jokes uh -huh. without pushing them in any way. And I think I know that's what why Woody was attracted to him. Yeah. It was his comedy, really. He is he has an authenticity about him. Uh, um, he has a, a stillness, a power, um, and uh, and he does have something in his voice too. It's like a a bit of a gravel sound mm -hmm. that makes him seem dangerous mm -hmm. and sexy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but he when he came in, I knew right away that he was special, and and uh, I thought, well, when I, I'll get him. 
into rehearsal and I'll, I'll drill some choreography into him to see how it goes. But he would come in and he would have his own special class every morning from uh -huh. like 10 to 11, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, just working on moves. And because and, the thing is, when you choreograph four characters like that, you have to uh, choreograph the way they would move. So he right. can't really launch into a, a dance that wouldn't be appropriate for Cheech. Right. It has to still be danced in character. Right. You know, and so when you when you choreograph for different um, different characters, your movement is always different, and you have to almost take that character on when you're working it out. Hmm. You know, so I became Cheech a little bit, uh -huh. just to, to just to, <laughs> to come up with something to teach him. So, what do you look for? I mean, how does someone, if someone gets an audition in front of Susan Stroman, five-time Tony winner, fourteen <laughs> nominations, uh, how do they impress you? I mean, like, what what do you think? What, what, what gets you? I mean, you've, you've had so many great performers over the years that you sort of worked with really early on in their careers or discovered them. Um, what, I, I just wonder, like, what, do you have any sort of, like, indication of sort of, like, what gets you excited when you meet someone? Sure, there's a, there's a fearless quality mm. when uh, that walks into the room that you uh, see right away that I'm attracted to. Yeah. And someone who's comfortable in their own skin. And, uh, you know, because the thing is, you, you want to recognize that that would be someone you would want to work with. Yeah. You know, there are yeah. people that walk in the room and you say, okay, I don't want to work with them. Right, right. But uh, there's something about their essence that uh -huh. uh, is, uh, has something, you know, the thing is about all those people in Blitz have a fearless quality. Yeah. You know, they, you can tell that they would try anything and not afraid to fall. Uh -huh. You know, and and then get right back up again. And uh, so, I mean, I adore the cast because of that, because yeah. they're fearless. Did you see that, like when Kristen Chenoweth walked into a Steel Pier audition? <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, that yes, was, that was sort of her Yes, because she walked first. right in, and I know Steel Pier. What was Pier, she like? I, no, she was just like she is today, uh -huh. you know, and she has a glow about her, and very funny. She's uh -huh. funny all the time, and and she, and she also has a gracious quality. She's yeah. very gracious, uh -huh. and you know, you could recognize that right away. But she definitely has a fearless thing going on. Another person that comes to mind is Norbert Leo Butts, who is yes. terrific in Thou Shalt Not. I didn't know him before I saw Thou Shalt yes. Not, and it was sort of such a breakthrough I know. for him. Yes. I guess he also seems like he would have a fearless. Yes, you know, Norbert's wonderful. And of course, you just did Big Fish with him this he, season. He was great in Big Fish. You know, he he not only had the the kind of the singing and dancing uh, kind of storyteller, but he also had a very touching um, role that you know made the audience cry and, yeah. and get in and. In touch with their own feelings, and you know, he really took quite a journey in Big Fish. You know, so, I miss that show. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk. So bringing up Norbert Leo Butts makes me think about things that weren't nominated for Tonys, <laughs> yes. because you know, this is always, of course, it's always a strange time at the end of the season when, when suddenly it's, everyone does work, and then okay, now let's who's yes. honored and who isn't. Yes. Norbert Leo Butts, a, a terrific performance yes, in I Big know. Fish, um, and Bullets Over Broadway did get a bunch of nominations, yes. but did not get a Best Musical nomination. How heartbreaking is that for you? Or at this point in your um, career, obviously you've, you've been you know, a Broadway regular for almost 25 years. I yes. mean, at this point, is it just sort of the business or is it still personal in any way? Uh, when, well, the thing is you can't take it as personal. Mm. You have to get on with it, don't you? But right. um, th when you create these shows, you're never thinking about awards. You're never thinking about yeah. those things. Uh, you're only you immerse yourself in the the bucket of artists and the music and the mm -hmm. dance and the writing and and you're just creating and you don't really come up for air until that first audience. Right. Um, so then all of a sudden, yes, you're hit with <laughs> an award season, right. which you weren't really thinking about right, at all. Right. So um, yes, it is it is heartbreaking when when people who you know deserve. Uh, uh, yeah. for the work that they've done and because I work so closely with actors you know there are a lot of actors like Norbert like like Marin like Brooks like Very Helena amazing, you yes. know yeah. um, that that you want um, you know Zach you know you you see what they do and what they've yeah. accomplished and you 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 wish it for them mm -hmm. you absolutely wish it for them so it is heartbreaking but it isn't uh, you can't take it personal because uh, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Right. Then you can't stop to right. think about it. You have to get on with it, right. you know, and just keep going and, At the end and of the champion day, your show. And, you know, yeah. and in the end, you know, if the audience is laughing, right. the audience is enjoying, right. then you've done your job. Right. It's all about what you're hearing in the theater, the yes. St. James yeah. Theater, every, eight times a week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Woody Allen. The fact that you've worked with Woody Allen, he's such a, a mystery. Yes. You know, he's in the tabloids. I mean, he's such <laughs> a, a, a New York institution that many people don't get 
I was shocked that I actually got to interview him on opening night of both yes. of my brother. I was like, oh my God, I'm in front of Woody Allen. I know. Clearly you're numb to being in front of Woody <laughs> Allen at this point. Yes. I mean, yes. it's just Woody, right? Yes, it's just Woody. What, what do we maybe not know about, about this guy? Well the, well, the thing is, you know, he is, uh, he's a, an incredible writer. I mean, he's probably a, one of our greatest American yeah, writers, absolutely. you know. There's Philip Roth, Updike, Woody Allen. I mean, mm -hmm. he's like, he's one of the greatest. And he's, you know, he's right now he's uh, preparing to shoot his next movie that he just wrote. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? right. Um, so he does a movie a year. I mean, it's, there's no one like him. He is one of a kind. Um, and uh, my, my relationship with him is very business-like, it's very work-oriented. Yeah. When we get together, it's all about the work, it's all about um, uh, delivering um, the, the scene and the mm -hmm. meaning of the scene and mm -hmm. the, the jokes. And uh, So we, there's no chit-chat. Right. You know, it's right. very, very work-oriented, right. which I like. And once I uh, caught on to that, <laughs> after like the first meeting, I thought, okay, that's it. Whenever, whenever I work with any writer, it takes a minute to find out the rhythm of the it. rhythm of how, well, yeah. how I'm going to get the best out of them. Right. And not, I'm not going to change something that they're used to. How to get the best out of that writer. Right. Whether it means getting that writer bagels and whitefish, uh -huh. <laughs> I can get the best out uh -huh. of that writer. <laughs> or is it going to be, um, oh, let's go to a martini and talk about this show, whatever, that writer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's trying to recognize immediately how you're going to get the best work out of somebody. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a writer or an actor, whatever, you mm -hmm. have to recognize what their process is. Right. So for Woody, right away, I knew it was going to be... Um, Business-like and uh, and and all about work, mm -hmm. all about the work. And uh, so once I caught on, I was good to go. Probably my greatest uh, time with him on Bullets was choosing the music. Uh, um, you know, to sit and uh, and just go through books of of um, wonderful composers and lyricists of that time. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of obscure. A lot of things I didn't really know. I know. Which is what's really neat about the show. And I think that's uh, what we wanted too, especially Woody. He wanted to pepper it with a few well-known mm -hmm. 1920s songs, like Let's Misbehave. But then he wanted to, you know, pick songs that people might not know, like Tana Fit Night Out for Men or Beast, mm. or uh, I Want a Hot Dog for My Roll. Yep, that, that's a memorable one. <laughs> that's a memorable one. <laughs> You know, so they're more obscure ones. So, uh, so it 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 makes the score rich. Broadway audiences love dance, which yes. is why we love you. Because <laughs> I mean, you know how to create a big. You know, I mean, that's what audiences just. Uh, you know, that's why I fell in love with Broadway. That's why audiences come to Broadway. And so you are definitely. If if you see Susan Stroman's name <laughs> on a show, you're like, okay, this is gonna. Oh, we're you. we're in good hands here. Thanks. Um, but if you look at, uh, I know like Warren Carlyle worked yes, with you for many years. Warren was like your assistant on many shows, right? You know, one, wonderful assistant. He was wonderful. He did producers with me in uh, Oklahoma and, uh, and also the movie center stage. Mm -hmm. But yes, actually, it was uh, Oklahoma at the Royal National Theater with uh -huh. Hugh Jackman. Right, with Hugh Jackman. Uh, is where I met Warren. And, and so he's, he was with me for a very long time. Yeah. And, and, I'm, so I'm, and I'm thrilled for him. Yeah, so he, he created After Midnight, which yes. is nominated. Um, and, and then you have the Rocky choreography, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. And then you have um, Casey Nicola for, yes. for Aladdin. Who was in uh, Steel Pier and was in right. uh, uh, what, Crazy For You. It, it, uh, he's done you, a lot of shows for me. You must feel like when you go to like the, the Tony uh, reception or whatever <laughs> and meet all the other nominees, I mean, how many of them have you worked with? Well, I mean, it's so... Yes, it's, I know. You, you must just feel like, like you know, the, the nucleus of, of the entire <laughs> Tony season. Well, especially um, Casey and Warren, I'm, I, you know, because they've both done so much shows, so many shows with me, and yeah. I'm really, really happy for them because they, they've kind of done it the right way, too. Uh -huh. I mean, they, their stepping stones have yeah. been correct and done yeah. in a, a graceful way, and, and uh, yeah, they're, they're fabulous. I know you're working on, you're doing Little Dancer, right? Yes. I yes. keep wanting to call it Tiny Dancer. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. No, I'm doing a new show called Little Dancer. and it's going Aaron's to be at the, and Flaherty show. Uh, yes, it's going to be at the Kennedy Center in the fall. So you and, must be starting that soon. Yes, actually, yes. We just came from a meeting for okay. that. And, uh, uh, but it's uh, based on Degas' uh, statue, the Little Dancer at 14, the very famous right. statue. Right, right. And uh, his relationship with that girl, because she is a historical figure. Huh. And uh, it has classical ballet in it, so it'll be, it's a real um, cross of art, classical ballet, and musical theater coming together. Wow, cool. Yeah. What got you, what turned you into a little dancer? 
<laughs> to use the title, <laughs> not Tiny Dancer. Uh, the, I know you grew up in Delaware. I grew up in Delaware, yes, and went to the University of Delaware. I'm a Delaware gal through and through. When did you first, when were you first on a stage in front of people performing? Well, I guess well, I've been in a dancing school since I was about five. Okay. You know, so it was all started there and, and the recitals that, that go with that. Um, right. And you know, I took piano lessons and guitar lessons, the works. Mm. And uh, my father was a wonderful piano player. So I grew up with music in the house all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was really sort of that passion uh, for music that made me want to dance and, and made me want to go into the theater. Because uh, he would play the old standards and, and the show tunes. Mm -hmm. and so, so in fact, when I worked with Woody on the music, I knew every song that he talked about because of my father. Wow. So there, we had a great kinship with the music of that time, right. and there wasn't any tune that the other one could say that we didn't know. Uh -huh. you know so it was very exciting. But, uh, you know, I think um, I always wanted to create for the theater. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 when I was that little kid who would dance when her father played the piano and create that dance all around the living uh -huh. room. Uh -huh. So I would choreograph to his music. Wow. And so uh, I came to New York as a song and dance gal because I could sing and dance, but it was always to become a choreographer and director. It was always to create for the theater. Well, I, yeah, I read something about when you were doing a community theater in Delaware, but it said you were already teaching and uh, directing. Yes, like uh, you yes. did, you were doing all that uh, in the stuff community theater early absolutely. on. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. What, what were some of your great uh, community theater performances we missed? <laughs> Oh my my goodness! This is pre YouTube. Oh, so. probably <laughs> probably uh, Bonnie and applause in the community. Oh, oh wow, I that'd be that. fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was very memorable. <laughs> That's a good one. That's yes. a good one. Yes. Um, and you now you were Hunyak. Now you in Chicago, right on the road? Uh, yes, the national tour uh, of of Chicago. I was the Hunyak, and it was Gwen Verdon and Chita wow. Rivera and Jerry Orbach, and I know it was all of them. Mary and I mean. It was great, and we uh, we went we were on the road for a year, right? And uh, so I learned quite a bit from that. That was really early, and one of the first things I ever did. Can you give me a good uh, not guilty, just so we have it on camera? Not guilty. So obvious that you had great you had greatness ahead <laughs> of you. So <laughs> obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hunyak, very, very uh, pivotal very, role. Uh, pivotal role. It's heartbreaking. I know. I mean, she was a big moment. I made people cry. <laughs> you did. I saw Big Fish. <laughs> you definitely, you definitely make people cry. <laughs> um, and you, uh, you, so you were on Broadway. You did, you did one show on Broadway, right? I did uh, Whoopi, Whoopi on what, Broadway. What is Whoopi? Whoopi was an old, it, it was famous in Eddie Cantor uh, okay. show, and uh, it was, I was a blonde Indian. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yes, okay. Nice. Um, and uh, so it was a big tap dance show. Okay. You know, it was wonderful. And uh, and then I did a show called Musical Chairs that ran about two and a half weeks, right. maybe two weeks, right. on Broadway. And it was with Scott Ellis. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and we we uh, we would always sit outside. Uh, it was in the Rialto Theater, which is like, uh, you know, forty yeah. third or something. They ran on Broadway. It's gone now. Right. But. Um, we would sit on the stoop outside and lament how we wanted to be on the other side of the table. And, uh, and we just, uh, Scott had known Cantor Neb because he did the rink. And I knew them a little bit because I did the national tour of Chicago. And we thought, well, what if we went to Cantor Neb and said, you know, let us take right. one of your shows off Broadway and, right. and work on it. And we thought, what's the worst thing they could say it would be no. Right. So we thought, well, let's try it. And, and they said yes. So we took... Uh, Floor of the Red Menace uh, down to the Vineyard Theater and did it in the yeah. form of WPA mm -hmm. Theater, and uh, it had a real cult following. And and you know we never went back on stage after that. It was great. I mean, because uh, you know how Prince saw it, Liza saw it. I ended up doing Liza's show, right. working for Hal. I mean, it was it was one of those things that. Um, you, you bravely do because I think you make about two hundred bucks for. The entire summer, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and we did it, and it was uh, it was something that that turned our careers, both of us. I read a great profile of you in the New Yorker by John Lair. Yes. Wow. I mean, yes. it's it's a very 
in-depth emotional yes. <laughs> yes. the Susan Stroman emotional journey, which we do not have to completely <laughs> yes. uh, we don't have to completely <laughs> uh, bring up. relate right now. <laughs> yes. But but that's quite a, what, what what's it like reading something that uh, uh, revealing well, about yourself? It was and, uh, nervous making. You know, John Lars, who was an incredibly smart man, uh, yeah. he spent some time with me at rehearsals for Bullets Over Broadway, and and just. Uh, spent some time with me, just you know, having breakfast and chatting, and then and then he would call everybody, call mm. my family, call right. you know uh, friends or colleagues, and so it was nervous making uh, the whole thing. Yeah, um, uh, because it is very personal, and um, so I, I I could only read it once, and yeah. was you know, uh, in one way I was uh, relieved he was so kind. Mm. Um, you know, but it was nervous making to to sort of open up. Yeah, to, to said that so much. You know, because people usually don't ask you those kind of questions. Yeah, and I loved reading uh, about um, Jeff Vizi. Jeff Vizi, yes. Jeff Vizi, and there's I a know. video. There is a video, video of you dancing. I know. With Je- and he was your dance partner. And, I know. And we lost him to AIDS. We, yes, um, it was. Uh, you know, one of. Well, for all of us who went through that, uh, um, losing so many friends yeah. in, in, during that it time. It seems like you came to New York right to be in, in that. the heart of all that heartbreak. I, I mean, was, yeah, because I lost my roommate, I lost my dance partner, wow. I lost my best friend. and um, It was a very hard time for all of us and, uh, who went through it. But yeah, Jeff was a wonderful dancer, and we, we did a lot of... Jeff and I um, created a, a show called Trading Places, and it was about two people obsessed with um, the old dance partners like Gene and Judy, right. or, or Fred and Ginger, right. or Fred and uh, Rita, or, you know, I mean, yeah. all the famous dance yeah. teams. And uh, we would recreate, to a T, these numbers. And I learned a lot from Jeff about partnering, actually. Mm. Um, he was a really good partner, and I, you know, I find that some of my greatest dancers, as good as they are, fall apart when they have to partner with someone. Mm. You know, so I was able to um, really learn a lot from him. Of course, we all remember your husband, Mike Ankrent, who, who died of leukemia. Yes. Um, incredible, incredible talent. Yes. Um, and so we read this story, and I just thought, wow, you've been through so much. And yes. then I, and I look at your work, and you do this very joyful, and I just wonder well, what all that does to you. Yes, you. Well, you know, I run to it. You know, I, I um, you know, wow. You know, I mean, theater historically has been something as a healer for people. Mm. You know, right from the Depression, you know, people go to Fred and Ginger movies during right, the Depression. Right. But it's that, that's right. all, it's really the same idea that mm. uh, um, when you are, <laughs> have a lot of grief in your life, the, you know, the theater can be really healing. Mm. And I, I have found it to be so for me. I. I can't get to work fast enough, um, and yeah. uh, oddly, I, I, there has been a lot of grief. But um, but I think the theater has um, made me strong and kept me buoyant, and and actually uh, fed me and kept me strong enough to be able to deal with everything else that's happened in mm. my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, yes, uh, for everyone, I think you know, the whether. Whether the audience is laughing or or crying or just putting their arms around one another, you know, it, it really fills me up to know that I might have touched an audience in some way mm-hmm. yeah, for some emotion. You know, I love to sit in the back of the house and, and hear them laugh at bullets and or or, or in contact to to hear them cry. Which, by or, the way, I love I love the, I love yeah, contact or big fish, you know, yeah. or. Or just even like Crazy Few, they put their arms around each other during mm-hmm. the show, you know, mm-hmm. and then and, and stuff like that makes, uh, it allows me to go on, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, when, you, when, you, when you're not feeling 100%. On a lighter note, what happened to your black baseball cap? <laughs> You used to, I, I, there, when we when I first came yes. into this industry, you yeah, always I had a black, black baseball cap on your head at all times. Where is it? You know what? I, I got too old for my ponytail. I think that was okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, at one point, you got to say, well, you can't wear a ponytail anymore. <laughs> so I think that's what happened. 
If you retired it? Yes. Is it still I do. like do you still have it at home somewhere? Do you still, <laughs> I still have some I black? Do. I still I still have some black ball okay. caps just okay. waiting just you're, in you're case. You're not wearing them out in public. <laughs> That's right. But at home, I'm just going to picture you at home watching TV with the black cap yeah, on. I know. I know. <laughs> the, I know. The, the signature Stro look. <laughs> Did anyone call you Susan, or they all? Everyone calls you Stro. Yes, yeah, Stro. It, it do, do you have any Susan? Anyone call you Susan? Like no, family or no family? Yeah, sure, okay. family. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Family well, usually you're Stro. Yes. Well, Stro, congratulations, and you created two beautiful shows, Big Fish and Bullets Over Broad. Broadway Thank you this so season, much. and Thank I you. can't wait to see uh, Little Dancer, not Tiny Dancer, Little Dancer. Yes. I'm going to go to DC and see it. Great. And I can't wait to see what you do next, uh, and <laughs> to see the, the, the 15th nomination, then the 16th, and the 17th, <laughs> yeah. uh, because uh, you definitely always bring so much joy to the Broadway stage. So well, thank you so, so much. Thank you for that. I love, love being here. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, we'll see you on the Tony Awards. Yes, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.